Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTKB Foundation Level Certification. We are in Chapter 5 and done with all the tutorials of this chapter. Time for looking up, up some sample questions from here to get some understanding of. So as usual, we'll be looking at some of the sample questions from here as well, but indeed it will have a great contribution to your examination. So you must pay attention to every single topic. However, as uh, the time allows us, we will be just looking at some of the sample questions from here to just understand how it could be difficult to answer the questions and how to answer them correctly within the given timeline. So picking up the very first question of the day from the chapter five, and the very first question is talking about how do testers add value to iteration and release planning? Again, this is one of those kind of questions where you can really have your context being identified from your learning already before looking at the options, thus not getting tricked away by the options. So make sure that you look at recalling what you know about testers contribution as a very direct topic that is iteration planning and the release planning. And we do understand release plannings are on a bigger part of the project rather sprint planning or iteration planning is just for a two week iteration thus it concentrates on concrete things rather than being on a bigger chunk of work so let's look at the options the option a says testers determine the priority of user stories to be developed i think the priority of develop develop you the priority of the user stories being developed at is just limited to the iteration planning and even if you just deep dive into the principles of agile you would understand that prioritization is done along with the business representatives and it's just not a tester's responsibility to do that okay so priority of the work to be done is mainly driven by the business and works together with every team so however tester alone is someone who is not responsible uh, and not something which just happens in both the places because see there are many points you may come back and tell me that Neeraj, in in that case uh, the tester is not something who is doing alone uh, no matter you know, what activities you talk about Agile. But again, we are also talking about what happens in release planning and what happens in iteration planning, right? In that context, this is not the right answer. Also to talk about the option B, tester focus only on functional aspects of the system to be tested. No, Agile doesn't deal only with functional. It deals with functional as well as non-functional. So no matter what you do, be it about writing user stories, planning, etc. It deals with both the things at the release level and at the iteration level. So it's not limited to functional. Okay. Talking about option C, testers participate in detailed risk identification and risk assessment of user stories. Now that's something very appropriate and it's a very straightforward point what we learned from the topic. If you want, you can always go back to the tutorial and re-listen to that. But risk identification and assessment is a step which happens at the release planning as well as the iteration planning. So it happens at both the places and tester has a very great contribution in order to identify the risk that they have to mitigate in terms of testing. So it looks great so far. Just cross check with D. D says testers guarantee the release of high quality software through early test design during release planning. Now that's a contradicting statement. Uh, when it comes to the implementation, design, early test case preparation, these are the core activities. They are basically limited to iteration planning, not to the release. Release, we just basically define the scope of work and see what are the major constraints of the entire release rather than con concentrating on the concrete level activities and doing them. So doing them certainly happens at the sprint level not at the release level. So it's a contradicting statement. So put together, the right answer here is C, testers participate in detailed risk identification and risk assessment of user stories. Looking at the next question, question number two, and here this question is asking you to select two options. If you remember, we told you in the beginning that there might be possibilities of uh, one or two questions being asked with five options and you have to select two right answers there. So what, which two of the following options are the exit criteria for testing a system? Again, this type of questions are generally options driven because you have to read the option and then make a decision whether it is entry or exit criteria. However, the basic definition in your mind should be popping up immediately as you read the question. That is, what is entry criteria? What is exit criteria? Entry criteria decide, defines when you are ready to get started and exit criteria determines when you are done and you can start, 
right? So let's keep looking at the options. Option A says test environment readiness. Uh, test environment readiness is certainly uh, entry criteria because readiness of environment allows you to perform executions. Thus, it's not an exit criteria. B, the ability to log into a test object by the tester login is more of like a prerequisite. Until unless I log in into a system, I cannot kickstart my use case or executions, etc. So prerequisite, it's more of an entry criteria uh, for an application to get started with performing an activity. Whereas C, estimated defect density is reached. Defect density is something which determines how much I can really take care of. Right in that context is a matrix which determines it's time for you to stop, right? And that's one of the exit criteria. If I talk about D, requirements are translated into given, when, then format. It's more of like formalizing a requirement or putting it into the agile format. Thus, the team can pick it up and start working on it. And that's more of an entry criteria for the team to get started. Uh, it's not that when you write a requirement into given, when, then format, then you can stop. Okay, or stop the work or stop the process or stop testing. It's a kickstart of the testing, right? Because we need that format to understand the requirements in details. And coming to the option E says regression tests are automated. Uh, looks a little tricky option because regression tests are automated are not applicable to all the projects. But depending on the scope of work, uh, scope of work, you may say that as and when your regression tests are automated, that's the end of the project one way or end of the testing handovers. So that's where automation of regression test suite is seen as an exit criteria, not an entry criteria, because that's not the first step to start with testing, right? However, some of you may think that either automated regression test suite, test suite would be a helpful thing for us to get started with regression testing or maintenance testing. Okay, maintenance testing is outside release, thus we don't take that into consideration. And given that regressions are automated, it's good for us to say that we can hand over the product or the deliverables to the business. That's where it basically becomes an exit criteria. Okay, so put together, uh, given that all the options are discussed, the right answers here are C, estimated defect density is reached and E, regression tests are automated. Moving on to the third question, which is a little tricky one, but still interesting and important for us to understand. It says during a risk analysis, the following risk was identified and assessed. So two of these steps have been already performed here. That is risk identification and assessment. So risk is identified as response time is too long to generate a report, whereas risk likelihood is measured as medium and risk impact has been measured as high. Just to recall, risk assessment is measurement of level of risk, where level of risk is determined by the combination of impact and likelihood. Further to add, uh, there is a response to the risk, which says an independent test team performs performance testing during system testing, okay? And a selected sample of end users perform alpha and beta acceptance testing before the release. Got it. So you got some steps defined to how to mitigate this risk. What measure is proposed to be taken in response to this analyzed risk? So all they're trying to ask you is that we identified a risk, we assessed a risk. Now, what does that response mean to you when we talk about the definitions of risk or classification of risk? And very straightforward options we have is risk acceptance, contingency, mitigation, and risk transfer. So I think instead of giving you the right answer straightforward, I want to define these four words. When we talk about risk, risk acceptance, it basically more of like means that you are ready to accept it and uh, you're just saying that we cannot do anything about it. Okay, more of like thunderstorm or cyclones, you know that you cannot do anything about it, right? So you call it as risk acceptance, that means you cannot mitigate it. Whereas option B, if you see, we have contingency plan, which more talks about preventive measures. That means you are talking about something which you can do in order to prevent the risk to happen. Okay. Whereas the C option says risk mitigation. And here risk mitigation simply means that you have steps to remove it or get rid of the risk by performing an activity once the risk happens. So you are going to perform the risk and then mitigate it. And last is, of course, the risk transfer, which means that it's not your ownership to do that, but someone else. For example, there could be different departments in an organization like sales, uh, pre-sales, and then support. Then you know that during the sales, you may find identify a risk that there could be a troubleshooting requirement because it's a technical product. Then we transfer that risk to the support team. 
that support team handle this risk that is how to troubleshoot the issue so people will call you and you give them the troubleshooting steps to get rid of the risk so that's where the transfer basically happens now i think it pretty much makes sense as per my question i have a response to the risk which is clearly defining the performance testing team will take care of it and it will be basically to talk about performing alpha and beta so you have the mitigation steps with you okay so you're not accepting you're not talking about preventive measures you're not talking about transferring the risk okay you are taking ownership on that because here do not treat yourself as a functional tester alone this certification is for all the tester as a testing team together okay so many people do get confused in some of my sessions that they think it is transfer because we are giving it to performance testing team and we are not performance testers when you're writing the examination please remember you are just representing a testing team not a separate portfolio okay so i think it's very straightforward the right answer here is c risk mitigation as per the response to the risk so i think that pretty much makes a lot of sense and you get a lot of tips and tricks as we talk about different sample questions so that's all from this particular chapter and tutorial team should you have anything else feel free to comment below i'm always there to address your queries and answer them well till then keep learning keep exploring keep understand the context thanks for watching the video team and happy learning Thank you.